What's up everybody? I am back to bring you your five highlights in five minutes on Vivica's Black Magic. This is episode six and I believe it is titled Thunder versus Magic. So my first highlight is white chocolate speaking up. Everybody is starting to speak up and speak out against Alvester being a drama queen. Um, this episode began as it normally does uh, with the fellas at their rented home, the one that Vivica rented for them. And I believe it was Bolo, white chocolate and heat were like, um, would you pick Alvester or Slam because Slam fit with the fellas perfectly in their last performance from last week. So all of the fellas agree that they would prefer to have Slam over Alvester. Um, they all repeatedly have called Alvester a drama queen. And they said Slam was so easy to work with and he came right in and was, was humble and just was a team player. So that's the first highlight. The fellas actually taking a vote on who would prefer Slam or Alvester. And everyone agreed on having and keeping and wanting Slam. My second highlight is Vivica meeting with Alvester. Alvester, as you guys know last week, was sent on his way and was not allowed to perform, but he still showed up to the gig, um, which I personally felt was disrespectful, as I said in my previous video. But uh, Vivica called Alvester in to address not only him um, showing up and popping up at the event after she, you know, gave him a week off, but also to address him as an entirety as a whole, because remember he said, uh, fuck black magic. So I was just like living because Vivica, she had no filter. She went in on Alvester as he was deserving of. And I think the thing that stood out the most to me was the fact that she said, I don't care who you danced with. I don't care if you danced with Beyonce. I don't even give a, give a damn that you were a ballerina since you were five years old. Mm -hmm. And Alvester had this old, I don't want to say humble look, but he had the look on his face when you know that you're getting checked. And so that was my second highlight because I'm like, yes, finally Vivica has dug into his ass. But of course, you know Alvester, he is a drama queen to the core and he's all about himself. He's not about the team or Vivica's black magic as a whole. So this talk is gonna do nothing, but probably keep him under control for a second, but that drama queen is gonna pop out at some point again. My third highlight is, I believe it was Alvester getting a massage. And so it was Alvester having his conversation with his business associate, Alvester, like, you aren't that damn famous. He has a whole crew of people on set. So um, he was getting a massage and he was talking about the fact that black magic or exotic dancing is not his real dream. His real dream is singing and he only took uh, the opportunity of black magic because it was presented to him. And my thing is like, if this is not your dream, your passion, then why the hell are you here? Because even his business associate or whatever she was to him said, um, yeah, this, what does this have to do with the music? You're trying to be a singer, that's your passion. What does exotic dancing have to do with your dream? And he said nothing. It was just, I guess, a stepping stone. But why the fuck are you here, Alvester? You're being so, um, arrogant and conceited and, and, and bringing so much drama to a project that you really don't want to be a part of. So why the hell are you here? My fourth highlight is Prophet the Problem and his daughter Diamond. You guys know that I love and go in for men with their children and being upstanding fathers and having strong relationships with their children. So it was great to show the side of how with being an exotic dancer, at some point, you're gonna to have to inform your children of what you do. And so it was beautiful to see how it really weighed heavy on Prophet the Problem. I think his real name is Mike, but it really laid heavy on him to wanna to explain to his daughter what his occupation really is so that he could be the first to bring it to her versus friends in high school telling her that her father is an exotic dancer. And that went over well because all she cared about was spending time with her father. 
he explained to her, you know, that he was an exotic dancer and that there's different genres of dancing and he's in a, an adult um, specific dance field. And she was like, um, it bothers me, yes. But what bothers me is me not having as much time with you as I used to have. So Prof of the Problem and Diamond, that was my ultimate highlight of this episode. My fifth highlight is, you guys know I always give you my feedback on the, the fellas' performances because they always give a performance at the end of every episode. And this time they look ahead, the fellas pair in twos. And um, Bolo and Penetration was put together. And I was so happy because you guys know that Bolo is my baby dad. And I really, really, really like um, Penetration. Like, I think he's so handsome. I love the choreography that he um, came up with when the guys were riding the chair. Like, I really, really, really like Penetration. So when um, I found out that they put Bolo and Penetration together, I knew that they were gonna give a phenomenal duo performance and they were actually the best out of the paired group. Um, the worst was White Chocolate and Profit the Problem. I don't know what the hell they were doing. I don't know why Profit the Problem allowed White Chocolate to come up with some puppet theme, whatever. Like, that, how, there is no sexiness in being a puppet. So I'm like, what the hell is going on here? But Bolo and Penetration definitely killed it, as always, because they kill it on their own. So to have them two coming at you at the same time, my God, oh, that's like the sandwich of life. One in the front, one in the back, and I'm in the middle. Now I do have a bonus highlight as usual, cause we're probably already over our five minutes. And my bonus highlight is um, the fellas having to dance after the exotic dance Las Vegas show fellas called Thunder From Down Under. And so it's majority group of white guys and they were there to kind of bring some competition for the black magic fellas and to pretty much let them know what their competition is gonna be and how they have to bring it. And my opinion and observation on that was, while Thunder From Down Under didn't have serious um, uh, or, or very, very difficult or involved choreography, they were phenomenal because you could tell by their faces and reactions that they enjoyed what they were doing. They enjoyed um, catering to the women. They just were having fun in their performance as a whole and they really connected with the audience. Like I felt like I was a part of this show just from watching it on TV. Now the Black Magic fellas, I feel like, and I've said this to Corey, I'm like, Corey, do you realize that, I, that they focus too much on choreography? I agree that they should be in sync, it should be a cohesive performance and some counts, but they're giving us too much choreography and it loses sight of them actually connecting with the audience. And one of Vivica Fox's special guests, viewers, I forgot what her uh, objective was. She does, oh, I think she was the owner of another uh, troupe of performers that are on the Vegas Strip. And she was like, yeah, your fellas don't really connect. Their choreography is great, but they don't connect. So that's pretty much it. That was my bonus, bonus highlight, the, the, the battle between the Thunder from Down Under versus the Black Magic crew. And also I wanted to tell you too, Alvester is so, I'm see, I'm done with my highlights, but I'm back to Alvester. He is so freaking petty because Alvester was paired with Heat and the duos. And he was pretty much like, you know, since Viv wanted me to sit back and not be arrogant and take control, I'ma let him do what he does. And it's like, okay, you, Alvester, you don't, make a decision or come across humbled as in working for the team. I feel like even you saying that in reference to you're gonna fall back and let Heat do his thing and try to come up with the choreography, that was still you trying to prove somebody else wrong so that you can look like you were, you were right for taking over and creating choreography. And then I also recollect uh, Alvester saying something in reference to when he found out that they were gonna be competing, competing against the Thunder from Down Under crew, he said, yeah, I'm gonna bring, you know, make sure that my um, Black Magic crew is on point. We're gonna, we're gonna kill them. But this is not your Black Magic crew. This is Vivica Fox's Black Magic crew. And I think I told you guys that last week, he acts like this is Alvester's Black Magic when it's not. Like, I am so sick of Alvester. And I say this every week. And 
You know what? Something else was hit me about hit me about Alvester. When he came back on board with the fellas and they were all actually annoyed that he was back at the rehearsal, because like I said, they wanted Slam, he had to first apologize or approach and make it right with uh, uh, Darren Henson based on what Vivica Fox told him um, and sending him back with the fellas. And he didn't even apologize. He was pretty much saying, you know, the past is the past. Bitch, where is your apology? You are wrong. And then had the nerve to say, you know, I'll be the bigger person. No, bitch, you're not the bigger person. You're the worst person. You are the one creating problems here. When you were not around, the fellas and everything worked out smoothly. You are the problem out there. So how dare you say I'm gonna be the bigger person? No, the wrong person can't be the bigger person. You can do the right thing and apologize. But I mean, that's pretty much it. I'm just tired of this Alvester, but if you actually think about the show, if there was no Alvester, then it really wouldn't be much of a show because it would be pretty, I won't say boring because we love the endings when they do their performances, but there wouldn't be much drama because all the drama comes from the drama queen Alvester. But anyway, these are my five highlights in five minutes with my one bonus highlight and we're way over the five minute mark, but I thank you guys for watching. Make sure you thumbs up this video. Make sure you share this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode six of Vivica Fox's Black Magic. It's actually Vivica's Black Magic, but anyway. Let me know what you guys think, what stood out to you, what are some things that I missed that you caught. And yeah, I guess I'll talk to you guys next week. Thank you guys for watching.